Hi everyone, and thank you for coming back to the Winnie Sun Podcast. Here, the first time doing LinkedIn Live with one of my best friends, Mike Chen, Mikey Chen, who is a total YouTube boss. I mean, you like. Okay, not only is he amazing on YouTube, I just want to say it before we get too deep in this interview. He's one of the nicest human beings you will ever meet. Like literally, my like one of my most favorite people on the planet. Like just good, good from beginning to end. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Or oh, right back at you. You're you're like you are you are actually the nicest person I've yeah. ever met. You're like, <laughs> I'm just like. Eh. And then but when he's like, oh yeah, let me let me help you, let me do all this. She is the nicest person ever. Yeah. Ever. Well, it's, it's probably because we connected because we both love to eat. And also, I, I love to watch her videos and everything else. But today is such a treat because Mike is in the house here at Sun Group headquarters in our studio here in beautiful Irvine. Um, he's not here that often because he's based right technically right now on the East Coast in yep. New York. And I know you're here for a big event, for an appearance and all sorts of cool stuff. But you know, I always tell them, if you come into town, please let me know so we can get together. So we're gonna yeah. get together and have some great food later. Always, always. Whenever I come in town, I always tell her and then we gotta eat. Yeah, and I'm gonna be East Coast and we do vice versa. And I'm like, I always text him, Mike, I'm hoping you're in town so that we can have some great food and have some great times. But really today is all about you because I wanna share with you so much of the amazingness of Mike with all of you because you know it's all about sharing is caring right and I'm telling you Mike is someone that I have learned so much uh, from in terms of social media and specifically video and I know a lot of you are looking to build out your brand build out your business taking it to that next level and you know just how important video is and now all of you have Mike, as one of your closest friends who can kind of coach you through all this, you know, we had already done the first segment of this podcast earlier. So this is our second sort of uh, jump into it because he had a call. I had a, he had a meeting. I had a call. So we're coming back here for the second sort of episode to the first episode, something like that. But we were talking about collaborations, and I know, Mike, you've done a number of collaborations, and you know, one thing that people always say is, how can I build my audience broader? And you had touched upon this, and I would love for you to go to, to this a little bit more detail. You mentioned, you know, you've been doing a lot of collaborations with other big YouTubers and social media influencers, and you just collaborated with the Try Guys, right? Yeah, yeah, I just did a Try, by collab, or try Guy collab, and, uh, uh, like I was saying, it was really interesting how like you didn't think our audiences would be this like similar, but uh, so many of uh, of their audience members knew who I was, and so many of my audience members knew who they were. So it, it turned out to be the, like this crazy, like unexpected but much appreciated collab, and it's just fun, you know. Like I think uh, it was like fireworks. Yeah, I mean when you're when you're getting started, collabing is probably very essential. That you have to do to try to try to you know build your audience base and such and um, and then and then after that it just it just becomes more fun like let's just collab because it's fun and interesting and, and not not like it's a necessity but like it's just fun and because we like each other um, but it's it's such a great tool to either grow your channel when you're first starting or just bring your audiences a, a new fresh perspective new content that they would appreciate. And I love that because the collaboration that you did was so much fun. It was actually one of the first videos I think you guys collaborated was what, I think it had something to do with dumplings. Yeah, we did a Ding Tai Fung dumpling eat off, so. Yeah, and you did really well. I mean, I had to represent. Uh, I, was <laughs> I sure think you Eugene won that one because he came all business. He was like, showed up, he's like, yo, I'm gonna take down these things. I'm like, did you train for this? I got train for this, I'm like, wow. He trained for weeks to eat dumplings. No, he didn't train for weeks, but he like <laughs> trained for like a day or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, he can eat. Skinny Asians can always eat. But you can eat. I mean, Mike, you really can eat. Look at, people always ask me that when they, they know we're friends, they're like, how does he eat as much as he does? I mean, this is no joke. And this is not just for the cameras. Even when the cameras are not with us, that one time we went to a ramen restaurant, mm -hmm. no joke, Mike had three huge bowls of ramen. And he actually, this is when the cameras were turned off. He actually ate them down to the point where we could actually see the bottom of the bowl. Well, I mean, you can't disrespect ramen. You know, you gotta, you gotta finish your ramen. And you can't just eat one bowl. Like, they don't really give you that much. It's just like, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta do bowls multiple like bowls. <laughs> you gotta do it. I mean, it's just, it just, it just shows great, great, great appreciation for a dish. 
This is so true. So when Mike actually, when you see him in his videos and he's eating all these different types of food, he actually finishes the food. Because I know this is sometimes he'll be texting me, he's in a different country and he'll be like, I'm in this country, that country. And he, you know, he's like, I gotta do this and this. I'm like, you know, knowing Mike, he's finishing every last meal. Every meal that's good. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, when, you, when you go around, like a lot of places, you, you can't disrespect a chef by like, hey, you know, can I, you know, I didn't finish my play, or hey, can I get this to go? So, I mean, and also like, I mean, when you're traveling, you can't really take a lot of takeout. Um, so you just finish it. This is always a big takeout box right here. And you just use it. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next question I know a lot of people ask you is how do you stay so fit? I know the answer, but maybe you could share with them because I'm sure they would like to know. Um, being Asian helps a lot. Uh, I credit my parents for passing on good Asian genes. Uh, I work out a lot. So I work out twice a day, usually. You work out to eat? I work out, no, that's the only, I do everything to eat. I work out to eat, I breathe to eat, I wake up to eat. Like, it's just a nonstop cycle that I love. <laughs> so, you know, those of you here watching, I love to hear sort of your favorite uh, video of Mike's. I know I've been watching him for years, and actually, by the time we met, I felt like I already knew him. And so I'm actually going to turn it to the audience real quick, because we have some comments. So, Sam, maybe you could read that for us. We see... Awesome. I can't read the whole thing because the lighting is in my eyes, but. Oh, my I think you just post things. I see Paul. Hi, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much. Yep. And then Carlos Phoenix also said it's awesome. He also does consultations as well for live videos. So that's a little shot. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're definitely talking video today, Carlos. So it's great to have you with us. So. Um, I want to talk about platforms, if you will. You know, we're doing this on LinkedIn Live, which I know was sort of new to you. Mm -hmm. yep. Big, big thing, the uh, LinkedIn Live. We've had it now for, I've had it for a couple of months now. I have loved sort of engagement and mm -hmm. sort of what it's done. It's complete. It's a kind of a business world, right? Yeah. And I know this is not normally a natural fit for you because no. you're really YouTube, sort of Facebook. I know you're really back on Facebook. You're huge on Instagram. What sort of platforms are you excited to see? And maybe so if like, if you had a magic wand and you can say, I would love for this to happen, uh, what would that look like for you? Well, right now, I mean, there's new platforms emerging all the time. Um, new apps that are developing a lot of new content um, that people uh, that people people really enjoy. Um, I've been approached by many of these uh, platforms to create content for them. Um, and uh, and of course, right now, the thing I'm, I'm probably most excited about is my new venture with Twitch. So Twitch, if you guys don't know, it's a live streaming platform by uh, owned by Amazon, and uh, uh, all they do is live streaming. So I feel like that's pretty much the future, is people wanna know what you're doing right away. Like, they don't wanna see something like maybe a month later they want to interact with you while you're doing it and that's what i love about twitch the interaction element to it um i mean if i could if there's something that's perfect it'd be like a combination of everything like which is you know a lot of a lot of apps they try to do but nobody ever gets it perfect like youtube has its own you know copyright problems and 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 you know ad advertisement problems uh, every every platform has something they, they kind of lack, but for me, um, also you know depends on where you are in the world. Like if you're in Taiwan, uh, you know your your advertising is not going to be worth as much, and they they favor YouTube and Facebook over others. If you're in like mainland China, they have all their own set of apps, so it's just kind of crazy. Um, but there's no one thing that's going to like like a master lord of the ring of apps that doesn't exist yet but uh what i'd like to try to do is just create content throughout as many platforms as i can that i feel like it's going to be really good and uh just not to try to put my all my eggs in one basket i love it so what's your thoughts on repurposing we hear a lot about this in social media that it's important like you have great content like you have some yeah. you have some videos that literally have been viewed millions and millions of times yeah. you know have have done amazing on youtube what are your thoughts on repurposing and do you do it uh, my thoughts are you have to do it. Um, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna film a whole set of stuff just for every single platform. It's impossible. So if you create good content, you can you know put it across different platforms because right now, luckily the different platforms they have almost like their own ecosystem. Facebook, there's people who like love Facebook. There's people who only live on YouTube. There's people I just discovered when I went on Twitch. Like there's people who are just all they do is watch Twitch streams. So we're at a point where they do serve different audiences. So no one's really going to be like, all right, how come you're 
posting this again here, against there. Some sometimes those comments come up, but like majority of the time, you know, people do just appreciate your content. Yeah, I mean, it's like watching a really great movie. You want to watch it a second time, like Game of Thrones. Like I would want to watch last night's episode one more time because there were details in it that I missed, right? So that's sort of that. So let's talk about engagement for a minute because I feel like you're the king of engagement. As someone, as your friend, I know when we go to eat in New York or it'll be Las Vegas or LA, wherever, San Diego, wherever we've been, like. When we go to a restaurant, people will line up to take pictures with you and spend time with you. And I see you because we're connecting on social. People want to talk to you and they want to get your feedback. When they're going to when they're going to India or they're going to Mexico, they want to know what Mike recommends that they eat. How how do you maintain all that engagement considering how busy you are? Because you're filming all the time too. Well, it's not like something I do on purpose. Like try to do. It's just that. Um when when you're creating videos for a living uh it's 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 a privilege it's not a right it's a privilege and it's a privilege that people watch so i always try to keep us uh you know a very down-to-earth attitude and it's not hard because i am that way anyway so when people come up to you like yeah you may be having a bad day or whatever but they're just really excited to see you and they don't know you're having a bad day or they don't know what's on your mind so just treat everybody you, you meet with respect and, and and appreciate that they actually want to take a picture with you because right like 99.9999 percent of the population nope, nobody's trying to take a picture with, with most people in the world but so when people actually want to engage with you and they want to talk to you it is a it is, it is a privilege now i'm not saying like you got to talk to every single person on every single social media platform is impossible and you do get a lot of people that hate on you and so i'm not saying like oh you got to please every single person but at least those who come up to to me on the streets and whatever i'll never say no to a picture never say no to a you know a, a talk or whatever they want to ask like i'll never be like no i can't talk to you Mm -hmm. And I know that you're you're not just great to your fans and your community, but you're also good to to doing appearances like amazing nonprofit organizations you've actually teamed up with. And I just feel like you you've done such a amazing job of not only building your brand, but you really do love and nourish your community. You know, yeah. you give them so much time. I mean, I see you interact with them as much as you can. And, and even like on Instagram, when you're creating your stories, you know, when I'm, I'm watching this video, it's like you're talking to the audience. Yeah, I mean, engagement is really important. Like, I mean, so when, 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 when you create something that's really cool and people watch it, like, uh, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's a privilege. It's not a right. It's like nobody on earth usually does that it's just you know the the select people that that can can engage with with a, with a group of audiences so treat it as a privilege and, and be considerate and, and be you know and and do it do it because you like to do it not because like oh i feel like i have to do it like do it because you like to do it like when i'm doing twitch now and i'm streaming live and talking to people it's fun it's a great time i'm, I'm i like it's like i'm interacting with my friends it's it's just really fun and honestly through doing this because i travel the world usually alone like, I never feel lonely, like, you know, it's always like, you always have like millions of people that you can sort that of interact talk with, it's kind you. of fun. I know, I feel that way too, you know, having a big social platform on Twitter, sometimes I'm, I just need an outlet from my day life, I'll go and say, hey, how's everybody going, right. and all your friends jump in, you're like, this is, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I think we should definitely talk about this more, I mean, you think about where you are today, and you think about the brands and other things that you've done already. You, I know uh, we can't talk about all of this, but I know you have some really fun projects that you're working on now. There's a lot of wonderful brands that you're collaborating with. Yeah. And the future is very exciting for you, right? Yeah. So when you look at how much you've come and you look backwards, what are some things that if you could do differently, what would you have done differently? Uh, I would have started sooner. Um, you know, like I, I started, like I said, probably in the third inning second inning maybe like definitely you know definitely after the first initial rush of social media people uh, i wish i started sooner i wish i could have done this for longer i wish i filmed less weddings <laughs> 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 definitely not as fun <laughs> okay well t t t t tell us about that i mean you look backwards because now i would i think you have so much knowledge just based on experience think about sort of that 
aha moment when when you knew you were onto something. But people actually think about back your first video that really did really well. Uh -huh. um, you know, obviously many of us are creating videos, but we don't have that immediate like viral, not even viral effect, but a lot of people watching and communicating and, and having that that content resonate with them. At what point did you feel like, well, I sort of get it. I I see what they want to hear and learn from me, and so this is what I'm going to share. Well, I mean, we we it's it started off like when we started doing After Great Wall, and we at that point I was just a producer. I wasn't even on the screen, and we had one video go viral. It was about like you know names of Chinese relatives, and and and, and that went viral. And then um, and then like we never thought. I never thought back then like okay, I'm any sort of like influencer, I guess, quote unquote, and YouTuber or whatever, like that wasn't part of it. It was really just, you know, I'm just trying to do something fun. And it was, you know, maybe two years after that when uh, Beyond Science started taking off and like, and then, you know, that was when I was kind of like, wow, um, people really like similar content that I like to create. And at the t time, it's not even like, oh, hey, now I can capitalize on it, now I can make some money. Is that, those thoughts never entered my head. It was more like, wow, there's so many people that are similar to me that like this stuff, you know? So it's, it's, it's never like, for me, it's never been, how can I make this a career? It's more of, uh, I can't believe there's so many people that shares an interest that I, that I, I love as well. And I think that's the attitude you have to kind of take when you're creating it something. It's never gonna be like, you know, I just want to do this to make money. I just want to do this to do this. Which some people do it, and that's fine, and they make and they they're very successful. I feel like the most passionate people are people who are just creating something because they absolutely love it. Love it, love it. And so then the question would be then, a lot of people watching this are thinking, okay, Mike, I'm gonna take this advice. I'm gonna create videos as my side hustle, right? I'm gonna yeah. keep my day job so I have my benefits, I have my income, I'm gonna do this. Because we talk about that being so important is that don't live off being a social media influencer, if right. you will, right? Because you need to have something to fall back on. But in your situation now, you know, you have definitely reached what most most people, you know, frankly, won't ever reach that sort of that one percent of really, really being really successful in what you do, creating videos for YouTube and all these other platforms. And now you are working lots of deals with lots of brands, and you're getting offers for all sorts of television sh shows and movie projects and whatnot. So, at what point uh, did you feel like it was okay to pivot from your day job? Um, like I said, like. Uh when I got my first, I think I, I didn't feel this way until I got about, I was about five paychecks in. Uh, and that's when Beyond Science was kind of taking off and all of a sudden I'm like getting paid and I, I was like, oh, it's, this is more than I make filming weddings. And then, but I was still like, you know, even today, like I'm, I have a very frugal mentality. Like I fly business class and, and yeah, I stay in nice hotels, but mainly because I want to film it. Not because like oh, I need to live there because I see the price tag and I'm still going for like the cheapest, like I'll still drive around New York City looking for free parking. Like, you know what I mean? It's, I still have that very Asian mentality. I gotta save money. I gotta, uh, I do whatever, whatever I can to save save money, save on spending, uh, whatnot. And, uh, uh, but it was about five or six paychecks and like, like I said, I was looking for an apartment and I found this apartment um, and it was, uh, one of them was a thousand dollars for a studio and the other was $1,500 for one bedroom. And I was like, I think I'm gonna take the studio. Cause like, I, I don't know, like a thousand dollars a month. That's I can live in the studio. Um, I ended up taking the one bedroom, but it freaked me out because I'm like, this is the most I've ever paid for an apartment. And fifteen hundred bucks in New York City is nothing. But I was living in a basement for you know five hundred. So like I, to me, it was just like I, this is the big step. And when I did it, and I was able to sustain that apartment after a year, I was like, okay, uh, this is kind of stable now. Yeah. That's how you felt. That was really an aha moment. I was think, you know, many of us want to have what you have, right? And many of you watching maybe in that situation where you feel like you're just you're 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 in something you're you have stable income, you have stable benefits, and then at what point are you able to make your side hustle like your main hustle? So I love that. I always say like when you can see your when when basically your side hustle can support your 
your main life, right? That can take care of all your, your rent and your food and your, your taxes even, all these things. At that point, you can strongly consider then making your side hustle your main hustle. But there's no shame in, in doing it on the side, especially in, in this very highly competitive environment. Because I know when you started, you still started, there was already a lot of competition, but yeah. not like it is today. No, nowadays it's, it's so competitive. Um, like I, I'm glad I'm not trying to do it today. Um, but, uh, and I, I can't even tell you like how, how to do it today. Um, because when we did it, it was just, we just did it. And I guess we got lucky. You didn't get lucky. It was a lot of hard work too. <laughs> it is, but, it's definitely a lot of hard work. But you definitely are so talented because I'm going to, I'm going to ask those of you who are watching, definitely go in and check out Strictly Dumpling or Beyond Science and tell us sort of your favorite episode because, I mean, they, the, the, every single, so many of them are so engaging. I actually rerun them with my kids and my family and sometimes my team here too because, like, there's just so, it's just fun watching you eat. And I where was I thinking, how much chili is Mike going to put in this thing? How much hot sauce is he going to put this thing? Might as well just dump the whole thing in. Yeah, no, it's just, that's you, how you're supposed to do it. Do you travel with hot sauce? Yeah, no, I don't. Um, not yet. Um, I am creating something that I can travel with, but it's always something that people suggest people want me to do, but haven't done it yet. I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. So, so for those of you who are watching and you're like, okay, so I would love to stay in touch with Mike. Mike, maybe you could tell them how they can stay in touch and maybe some of the ways that they can engage with you. Yeah. I mean, if you want to watch the YouTube, Strictly Dumplings, uh, one of the big, biggest, biggest channels I have and the Mikey Chen vlog. <clears throat> if you just search my name, Mike Chen, it'll just all pop up. Um, Instagram, um, Google, just Google Mike Chen. Oh, I think it's, it's going to all pop up. Instagram is Mike. X-I-N-J-C-H-E-N, same thing with Twitter. But yeah, you can follow me, follow the adventures there. And what are you looking forward to in the future? I am looking forward to moving to Japan because I'm going to do that end of the year and I can't wait. That's going to be so amazing. Every time I think about it, I feel emotional. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed being here with you, Mike. Well, thank you for having me. This is like, this is the first inning. This is like the first podcast so honored <laughs> so honored to have him any time <laughs> to spend time with this gentleman is a big win for those of you who aren't following him already please do and you can follow mike at uh strictly dumpling on youtube or go to my instagram mike x-i-n-g-c-h-e-n same thing for twitter and thank you so much for tuning in you can follow me on winnie sun and i will look forward to seeing you on the very next episode take care now see ya we gotta go eat we gotta, go. gotta go do it